Welcome. This is Ryan Sokolowski again, Senior Program Manager with the ECG CAT team. And today we're going to look at the third and perhaps one of my favorite uh, storage replica scenarios, and that's the end-to-end uh, -end stretch cluster walkthrough. So let's take a look at a visual representation of what we'll be working with. Uh, so conceptually, uh, what we're dealing with is a single cluster that spans multiple geographic locations. Uh, that's the definition of a stretch cluster. Uh, notably, uh, also in a stretch cluster, you're working with what, what's referred to as asymmetric shared storage, where nodes in one location can see their storage and nodes in another location, uh, geographically separated, would have their own storage presented, uh, again, all being in the same cluster. So let's jump into it. Uh, now, instead of multiple nodes in each site, uh, I'm working with a two-node cluster. Each of these are physical servers. And you can see the uh, representation of the geographic uh, dispersion here with the multiple IP addresses, 172.16.0 maps to stretch 01, and 16.10 maps to stretch 02. So let's jump in and look at the current disk configuration. Stretch01 will be our source uh, server, if you will, or uh, side of the cluster. And we have a 1 gig uh, data volume and a uh, 9 gig logs volume. There's a requirement, uh, again, for a minimum 8 gig. And we'll take a look at on the data disk, uh, we have a, a few files uh, the Microsoft logo and our team logo, ECG Cat, and then a disk speed folder with an application in it. Um, and on the uh, opposite uh, side of this cluster, uh, we have, uh, again, asymmetric storage. So separate uh, disks presented, uh, again, a one gig uh, data volume that will be our destination for replication and a nine gig logs volume. And uh, notably on the data volume, there is no uh, data on this side. So we'll go over uh, back to our source location and let's go to the disks node and bring in uh, all four disks, uh, the two on either side of the equation here. And all four of these will pop in and then what we want to do is we want to select our data disk, which counterintuitively is the smaller, the one gig. Uh, so we're going to add this particular source data volume to cluster shared volumes. And that comes online. And now we're able to uh, use uh, the, the GUI to configure storage replica. If you right click on that source data volume, choose replication and enable it brings up our uh, storage replica wizard and we'll click next and you can see in the background what's happening is the uh, status of the disks is being changed dynamically as they're being uh, moved around uh, from owner node to another owner node um, and uh, bringing them online and offline and we're going to give the wizard another chance here uh, to pull up uh, the disk as it's manipulating in the background. And there we've uh, pulled up uh, a GPT disk of the exact same size. Uh, so this is going to be our destination data disk. And we'll select this and we'll say next. And again, the statuses change. Uh, this is now going to be our source uh, logs volume. So we'll select that. And again, the statuses are changing in the background. Uh, disks are coming online and offline. Um, and this is uh, required uh, with an asymmetric storage approach. Uh, the, the disks have to be moved uh, from uh, available storage uh, from one side to another uh, to claim ownership and then uh, make them visible. And uh, operation is taking a little longer than expected. And there it's completed and it's found our destination logs volume. And we'll select that. There's two options here uh, 
to reduce some of your initial synchronization time, you can choose to work with a, a seeded or preceded destination disk. And this would be if you had uh, uh, taken a volume with a, a number of virtual machines on it and created a backup of it and then uh, performed a, a, a restore, uh, you would have uh, shorter initial synchronization time. So we're just going to choose to overwrite the destination volume. And instead of enabling write ordering, we'll stick with highest performance. And we get a summary, our uh, source data, source log, destination data, and destination log. And you can see, again, the, the magic happening in the uh, background in Failover Cluster Manager, the different statuses of the uh, disks being changed. Uh, the logs volume uh, for the source has been brought into cluster shared volumes. And shortly, what, what will happen is the uh, destination uh, data and logs volumes uh, will be uh, assigned to a replication group uh, rather than available storage. And the status will change on those. And we'll see that probably happen uh, dynamically in real time uh, behind our wizard. They're in available storage now. And there they just popped into uh, storage replica group one. Uh, their status is changing again, and our wizard is nearly complete. And when this is done, we'll refresh. You can see the uh, replication roles are updating, and our wizard has completed. So we'll finish this, and we're going to refresh our failover cluster manager view. And we'll do it one more time. And uh, there we have our uh, replication roles. Now, uh, one of the other reasons I think I like this scenario is because of the integration with Failover Cluster Manager uh, and some of the additional information that we're able to see uh, as it's represented in uh, the tool here. So we're going to select our uh, source uh, data volume and when we select that and go to replication down here you can see the relationship that that uh, volume has with the other volumes uh, what its status is um, and and some of the other uh, vo volumes and disks that are involved in this now to to reverse the replication well actually let's let's go to our our second location our second site and we'll access um, the uh, volume one under cluster storage, uh, just like you would in any uh, environment. It's a uh, clustered volume. It's it's available uh, across the cluster, so clients in this location can access this. Now let's pretend that it's a, a, a file share and that I'm uh, creating some advanced uh, documents here, uh, like this. So. That's what we'll do. We'll create that over on uh, the second data center location from Stretch02. Uh, and then let's go back to our uh, main uh, data center location and let's reverse uh, the replication direction. And to do that, that's very easy. You right click on your source data volume and you choose move. And you could select the node if you wanted to control a failover within a particular site or if you wanted to actually reverse the replication direction by having this move to the other location because we're dealing with a two node cluster cross site or in a stretch cluster configuration we'll just do uh, best and you can see what is happening again the statuses are changing uh, and the direction of replication is changing uh, as these uh, volumes are, are switching roles uh, in storage replication. And we'll give this uh, a moment to complete. And all the last ones coming online. Give it a quick refresh. 
So our source uh, is, is coming online, and you can see that that's moved from SR Group 1 into cluster shared volumes uh, on stretch O2, and this is our source data disk. And there it has uh, completed. And let's, uh, just to show the other side of the equation, since we are on stretch 01, uh, let's access across to that remote location and uh, see the cluster shared volume. And there is that advanced document that that user created uh, in the other location. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to uh, see and illustrate. And uh, to basically to remove uh, replication, uh, you can do this uh, in the same fashion. Whichever your source uh, data volume is, if you right click on this and you say replication remove, and it'll say, are you sure you want to remove this replication? And we'll say yes. And you'll see what will happen uh, in the window again, going through the process of, of shifting around owners, uh, the status, and uh, all, all of the, the disks are coming out of their replication roles. Uh, this will update shortly as it uh, completes removing replication from this stretch cluster configuration. And we'll refresh it one more time. All of those are gone. We've lost our replication tab here. And uh, just to confirm that uh, doing this uh, didn't do anything with our data, we can still go in and access our uh, data volume in under cluster shared, uh, uh, cluster shared volumes and access all of that data. So that's what we had for today. Thanks for joining me for the third part of our storage replica series, uh, looking at one of my favorite scenarios, the stretch cluster end-to-end -end walkthrough. Thanks so much.